and use and care. I use these in my cooking pretty exclusively, um, and I get a lot of questions of people of how do they care for their cast iron, is my cast iron a lost cause, or why is my food sticking, and I've been meaning to make this video forever, um, so I'm making it today on my phone, just came from the gym, I don't have makeup on, so <laughs> bear with me, you guys, um, the information will be good, production value will be low, but it's the, co it's the quality of the <laughs> of the information that matters. All right, <clears throat> so first I'm gonna start by showing you guys how to like clean a pan. Um, this one's already clean. It's kind of dry, so if before I use this, I would oil it, but we'll get that, we'll get to that later. First, I have a dirty one that I wanna clean. And I'm gonna show you guys, it's pretty gunky. See, I cooked something in it maybe a day or two ago, and you know, the fat kind of oxidizes. If you leave fat in your skillet, the cool thing about cast irons is you don't have to wash them with soap and water all the time. You can usually just wipe them clean. Um, sometimes I'll leave bacon grease in them if I'm going to use it later that day. If you leave your fat in there too long and it stays on the stove and it gets, even if it's not directly cooking, but it's getting heated by other things, the fat will oxidize and get all gunky. So this is how, when you get to this like sticky stuff, how you wash it. There's several ways to clean a cast iron. I'm going to show you the most popular, easiest way. So. First, we're going to put this on the stove and we're going to heat it so the fat gets soft. Then we're going to boil some water. So, let's go to the stove. Okay, dirty skillet on the stove. It's heating on medium heat. And it's feeling pretty warm. This happens pretty quickly. So, what I'm going to do here is add some water in there just a little bit. And we're going to bring that to a boil. So, once this comes to a boil, it's going to help unstick all of the goofy stuff on the skillet. And then we're going to turn it off and then dump it out in the sink. So you're going to need to get a kitchen towel already and chain meal. This is my favorite thing to clean the cast iron skillets with. It's chain meal. You can get it at cooking supply stores or on Amazon. If you try and use your sponges to get the fatty goop off of your cast irons, you're going to go through a lot of sponges. So this is my saving grace. Um, I'll bring this water to a boil, to a simmer. It's going to start right now. Um, and once I got a pretty quick simmer, um, I'm going to use my kitchen towel to dump it into the sink. And we're going to use a chain mill. And I'll show you. <laughs> knowing the procedure. So let me show you here. I have on my stove, you'll notice the difference of the one we just cleaned and oiled, and then this one that I used it, I know probably last night I use this almost every day, and it's looking a little dry. It's because I cleaned it and it wasn't oiled directly after cleaning, but just adding a little bit in here, and this does not constitute cooking oil. This is just like the seasoning of the skillet. So you just want to make sure it's, you don't have excess oil. You can use a paper towel again here. But just make sure it has got that nice sheen. Now, what we're going to do is heat it over medium medium heat. So this is, you don't use hot heat on cast iron until the pan is completely warmed up. Um, they need to heat slowly, and that's going to help the nonstick aspect. So we're going to heat it over medium heat, and then once it's come to temperature, and I will show you how to check that, I know just by kind of feeling it, um, and you will get there too, but the, the best way to test it is by putting some water on it. Um, then it's ready to add food. So once I'm ready to cook, I'm going to add another cooking oil, either more olive oil or we're just going to do some ghee. And we're going to fry some eggs to show you the amazing non-stickness of this goodness right here. Okay, so the skillet's been warming for a few minutes. And then I'm going to show you just a drop of water. And you see how it dances before it starts sizzling off? That's when you know it's ready. So we can just dry that off. And now I'm going to add in some fat. I'm going to do some olive oil. Because I'm going to fry some eggs. And then when it comes to cast iron, or just in general cooking because I like healthy fats, and especially on a low-carb, high-fat diet, um, so you can swirl it around. Okay. 
You want to make sure, there you go. You've got that sheen all over the entire skillet. Another thing with cast iron, I like to rotate it occasionally, because although that's a pretty big flame, you see on medium heat, I like to rotate it because they actually don't heat as evenly as people say they do. They need to get like equal, like they'll heat, they'll heat evenly, but they have to have equal heat, and sometimes it's hard to tell. So, hot cast iron, we added the cooking oil, and now we're going to add in the egg. And you see how it's frying? Like, this is still on medium heat. The cast iron, it, it, it conducts a lot of heat, so you don't have to put it on high to get a higher temperature. I'm just going to let these cook here. A little salt. Give this pan a little rotate and just let them go until the whites are completely cooked and then we're going to use a handy dandy fish spatula to scrape them up. This is something else that's very important with cast iron skillets, using the proper tool. You don't want to use a rubber or a plastic uh, spatula on an iron pan. Um, it's not going to be as effective. You need to get in there and the thin, thin edge is really important. But as you can already tell, we go in here, look, they're not stuck at all. And it's all about that medium temperature, having enough fat, and making sure your cast iron was properly prepped how we did. You, you wash it, you dry it, you oil it. If you're just re-putting it onto this, that gunky oil, that's going to start sticking. And it's okay when you scrape them completely clean. Cast, there's no lost cast iron. If it gets, if it gets um, rust, you do this process. You wash it, you boil the water, you scrape up off the gunk, you give it a little bit of soap and water, just a little bit of soap, you dry it completely, then you oil it well. And then you can put it back in the, in the oven, you put it in the oven at 350 to season it, or if not, like this one, it wasn't rusting, so it's fine, it's sealed. Okay, eggs are going really well. We're getting a good crispy edge. Completely nonstick. Look at that. And that happens with anything you want to cook in the cast iron. But you have to do the preheating, and then the oil, and then the food. Now, there can be, there can often be some people worrying about, what about iron leaching into my food? If you're not simmering in cast iron, you shouldn't worry about iron leaching into your food. I mean, it is good for iron for a lot of people, but if you have an issue with too much iron, as long as you're not simmering food, that's usually, even in, uh, in aluminum cooking stuff, like you're going to get a leaching when you're slow cooking, simmering stuff. So for a Dutch oven, I have an enamel cast iron, which is cast iron that has the enamel coating on it. And the same care techniques, kind of, not the cleaning, but the same low heating, then the fat, then the food, it'll apply and it'll work. Um, yeah, I love cast iron. It, these will last. I can. My children will inherit these pans, um, and I find that they cook food. They get a good. The texture is just so unique. You get such good texture with cast iron. You don't get the same kind of brown or crisp when you're using um, nonstick. Or um, I honestly don't even get the same thing cooking with um, all clad, which I have a whole set. And time and time again, I come back to these to these same skillets. Um, so let's finish these eggs, and I'll show you how to just deal with your cast iron when you're cooking a normal meal that's not making a mess. I'm going to go a little over easy here. Oh, I broke my yolk. All right. Yeah, it all comes off. And if it doesn't, if something sticks, no big deal. Let me show you. So the skillet is turned off right now. I'm going to grab another kitchen towel. You can also use more paper towel. I just ran out. So the way I would just deal with this is like, oh, I'm cooking myself eggs and I'm done. Since it's so clean. That's it. And then I would leave this bad boy on the skillet. On, they just live here on the stove until next time. Um, and yeah, the eggs came off for my broken yolk but they came off perfectly so that's how I use cast iron um, and I use that I use it all the time there is no such thing as a lost cause cast iron if your cast iron like I said is starting to rust just give it a good scrub get the chain mail it will make a difference 
Um, you can also use like coarse salt, but I feel like you're wasting salt and that stuff isn't cheap. Um, give them a good oil, put them in the oven, but they are really sturdy things. Things that caramelize, like I'm cooking with coconut aminos or anything that gets sweet and gets sticky, that's going to be the time that you need to wash it afterwards. And so if something's really stuck, boil, bring it to a boil, deglaze. So you'll see in recipes a lot, it says deglaze the skillet. So when you're sauteing veggies and all that stuff and everything's getting nice and stuck on the pan, you put in a vinegar or a bone broth and you deglaze the skillet, you unstick all that. Essentially, when you clean cast iron, you deglaze it but with water and then you scrub it clean. So worst case scenario, um, if the deglazing doesn't, doesn't work to unstick, use your spatula, which is, this one's dirty now, with egg yolk, but scrape it. Once you've boiled it, if it's not coming off, use a spatula and scrape up all that gunk, get back to a naked skillet, massage oil into it, and it's going to be like brand new. Um, so yeah, that is how I cast iron, and I do it all the time. I've been using Lodge cast iron for years, and these two skillets are my workhorses. I have an, what is it, an 8 inch and a 16 inch. I pretty much use, cook everything in the 16 inch. Like 8 inch is good for like one meal, one serving, one or two people, but the 16 inch you can cook it for a family of four in that one skillet, and it's just, it's, it's amazing. I love these things. All right, hope you guys, hope this is useful to you, and if you've been having trouble with your cast iron, I hope I answered your questions. Um, remember to come visit me at thecastawaykitchen.com for lots of awesome recipes that you can use your cast irons for.